Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo. Today, we're actually building for the African Buffalo. I've had these guys in my trade center for quite some time, so it's about damn time that we actually give these guys a lovely little habitat where they actually cohabitate with the Southern Ground Hornbill. Welcome to Hope Harbor Zoo. You know, sometimes I feel like I should bring back the little jingle, you guys remember the commercial, but other times I'm like, oh my gosh, no, that would get so, so old so quick. Welcome everyone, hope you guys are all having the most wonderful, wonderful days. My name is Leaf and it's so great that you guys are able to join us as we do a quick little habitat over here, nothing really too crazy, but we are building for the African Buffalo. Super excited to get these guys in the park finally, because I actually got them from my good buddy Forge, and it's about damn time that they make their way into the zoo. He always makes fun of me because I hate to do savannas, and you know what? I'll say it. It was his birthday the other day. Hope you guys are able to say happy birthday, Forge, in the comments down below, because he was able to give me these animals kind of for free. Uh, so, the, yeah, uh, it's my little birthday gift to him that I actually build a good hoofstock enclosure. Uh, so I actually have this habitat cohabitate. I'm not making any sense right now. I actually have these guys cohabitate with the southern ground hornbill, which I also got from him, which is kind of crazy. But they are uh, cohabitating. Wow, I'm really losing it right now. Uh, but that mod is made by Narwhaler. Go check it out. It's really one of his best mods out there. It's beautiful, too. Uh, and plus, it doesn't need to fly. <laughs> so I guess it kind of works out like that. So over here, I'm using one of these gates. I forget who that's actually by, but I use that in the original Hope Harbor Zoo. No, the Hope Island Zoo. Uh, but I have that over here just to kind of cover up this little backstage area. I've been noticing I haven't been doing too many backstage things in Hope Harbor Zoo. So I really wanted to bring that back a little bit and start to imply that there's a little bit more than meets the eye. So we kind of continue this wall down here. In case if you guys are wondering, yes, I am using a gridded piece and kind of rotating it on the y-axis. That is a little bit of a toy thanks to free build. Really, really awesome stuff right there. Uh, so that's kind of what I do right there, and it's just super awesome, guys. Uh, so you can see I am slowly but surely continuing that down the hill and just covering up that kind of bright concrete path. Obviously, we would kind of be taken out of the safari experience if you were to see that on the other side of the habitat obviously so many zoos um, you can actually see infrastructure behind habitats and stuff i always find that kind of cool but any way that we're able to hide that in our imaginary zoo game is always welcome so i kind of cover it up with those little kind of like brick walls back there again those indonesian bricks are so so good Really some of the best pieces we've gotten in the game as of late. Just super useful, super versatile. Always love to see pieces like that. What I also have planned over here is another panoramic habitat. I've been loving doing these. Uh, so ideally, I want to have these for warthogs and bat-eared fox. But currently, our warthogs are somewhere else. So I'm going to be doing a swaparoo with um, the warthogs going in that habitat. And then moving the Red River Hogs back with the Cranes, I think it was. I'm not sure. I gotta double check on that. But eventually, all our pigs will be housed, so that'll be good. But that habitat will overlook into the Buffalo exhibit. And it's just gonna be a really, really fun look. I don't know. I'm super excited for that. So one of the challenges over here was actually creating, like, this barrier in between the guests and the Buffalo. Because Buffalo are very dangerous creatures. You do not want to mess with them. I know people tend to think of cows as, like, these lovely little animals. No, I'm deathly afraid of cows, actually. Uh, so we want to make sure that guests are not able to access these like the enclosure at all by creating as many barriers as we can so we do a whole lot of different uh techniques when it comes to that stuff and you could see we're working on the first one right here which is curbing uh obviously it wouldn't do much you could just step over it but just having custom curbing in here is a number one thing for me uh because it helps create a zoo look that is just so iconic to itself. You can have all these different types of custom curbing. I feel like one of these days I'm going to do a custom curbing pack. I feel like that'd be a really, really fun thing to have on the workshop. I don't know. But you can see, I'm kind of continuing it all throughout here, even on like these little elevated areas where I need to make it flush with the terrain. 
Uh, so I kind of do that a little bit, but eventually I get it all to look good. And any areas in like the corner and stuff that doesn't really look too good, I just throw some other stuff in there, kind of like these um, lamp posts. Yeah, that's a really good way. Uh, so I kind of just throw that right there in any other places where I feel like they don't really work too well. I'll just throw a lamp post in there. Always super easy to do that stuff. One of the other things I do as well as a way to create this nice natural barrier is a moat. Uh, so I kind of have this area be nice and kind of covered up so that the buffalo can't escape because it's a very vertical, vertical hill. Um, so I use that to my advantage to keep the buffalo away from the guest view. So that's always super awesome to have. And then, of course, water in there as well so that they're a little bit slippery if they do try and climb up those little, like, cliff faces. But they probably wouldn't in the first place. I don't know. Uh, but... We always want to make sure that our guests stay safe. And another thing I do as well, which you probably won't see for a bit, is also include some natural plant barriers. Typically, you don't want to step on plants, and stepping on plants is like, it's like a natural deterrent. So, let's just say you have like a nice garden right in front of you. You're going to walk around the garden naturally, unless if you're like a complete monster. But, um, having that in a zoo is something I've learned from, like, the European mindset. I think I was watching, like, Just Goron with his Bexabergen video. I think it was around, like, the elephant build, um, where he has, like, this beautiful, well, both him and the safari park have this little barrier in between the elephants and the guests, where, of course, there's a little bit of hot wire, there's a little bit of a moat, but there's also a whole lot of prickly foliage that would naturally keep guests away from you, which is something I really, really wanted to bring in here. Uh, so that's kind of what we do. Also, just putting some trees down where the bat-eared fox exhibit would be, just as a way to help keep it a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more interesting and just good for screenshots for now, until I actually do get the time to build for that habitat. I do want to do that eventually, but right now, I'm kind of just spent on building. Uh, so, getting to work on the actual habitat itself. Again, I'm using a little bit of scaling in here to create these nice little dynamic flowy grasses. Uh, really do love this, especially for the drain grass, because they just wave in the wind, and it's the coolest goddamn thing out there. I don't know, I love to watch it kind of, like, wave, and then, like, I don't know. It just helps the habitat feel so much more alive than just relying on animals moving around, because let's be completely honest, animals in the zoo, they don't really move too much, uh, but if you can make the move in Planet Zoo, more than happy to see that happen. I don't know. So... I'm also doing a whole lot of other things in here as well, just creating a lot more dynamic areas. Obviously, since one big savanna for buffalo, they really would trot over all these grasses, they would eat all these grasses, and it would just look like a big dirt pit, but that's not really what I want in this zoo. Uh, ideally, there would be like a few small patches in here that would have a little bit more, more intense grass growing up and stuff like that, so that's why I kind of throw in there. Uh, and here is what I'm talking about from before. I use the Siberian pea shrub as a way to create this nice natural barrier in between the guests and the moat. Uh, so it's just a really, really beautiful way to, I don't know, kind of liven it up a little bit more. And I really do love how well you can make it look like these different patches growing. I don't know, it's just super awesome when all is said and done. So just throwing a few of those in here, as well as bramble bushes, because they're also kind of prickly. Uh, it's just a really, really wonderful way to create this nice dynamic look. And I also do that for the Bayard Fox exhibit as well, because we're going to be building there eventually. Might as well get it done right now. I also throw down some rose bushes because I felt like we needed a little bit more height and those bushes are just a really, really wonderful way to create a nice kind of tall look when it all comes together. Also some trees because I felt like we needed a lot more trees in here because I don't know, I feel like we have so many really awesome forested parts in the zoo that I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose the fact that this is Maine. This is going to be like very wilderness centric. Uh, so as throwing down as much trees or as forest as we can, is really going to help this place come together. Another thing too, I wanted a few like overturned trees as well, uh, just for our buffalo to rub up against and stuff. I don't know. Felt like that'd be cool. Here's the cinematics guys. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy the video, always do appreciate a nice little like possibly 
possibly even comment if you are going to say happy birthday to my good buddy Forge. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful, wonderful days. Goodbye now.